So could you please come up? Um, you met, met Jan Tyson and, and uh, Jan Osuza, and now we have another gentleman from Chemtech, which is a Siemens business um, from, uh, and, and his name is Breno Bergunzi, I think that's how you say it. Okay, so welcome. And uh, Breno, why don't you just say a minute about you know, your involvement with the project and everything so people know what kind of question to ask you. Okay, uh, my name is Breno. I'm a uh, sales director at Chemtech. Uh, Industrial IT is one of our business line. So we had the opportunity to go to, through this project with Vali. It was a very interesting project. And it's good to see a uh, real value that we, that we are bringing together with the Bali team. Okay. okay. Um, so are there any questions? I'm sure we have a question. Somebody's good. Okay, good. We have a, wait a second. We have a mic. Why don't you um, say your name, too, if you could, sure. please. Hi, Andy McDonald from Unilever. Um, Jan, just a quick question to you. I saw, you know, the supply network that you had there and the, and the comprehensive dashboard. How do you incentivize your suppliers to innovate and share their innovations with you? You said that was a key part of that, but how do you actually, maybe not incentivize, but motivate them to do that? Uh, okay, I have a microphone here. Um, yeah, how do we incentivize? That's the reason why we set up this program, to make it very clear that whatever we do, we do in partnership. So we have some, let's call it pain and gain sharing. So whenever suppliers come up with ideas how to improve, how to, uh, let's say, make the entire supply chain a little bit stronger, how to reduce costs, they will participate from it. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a very fair approach. If you, if you do a very simple 100% for me and 0% for your solution, you will never incentivize people. And uh, we also have a very clear strategy on uh, Supplier, we call it supplier classification, so getting certain statuses within the company, partnership status, preferred status, and this is what we communicate. We have supplier days, and uh, we create competition between the suppliers, and uh, whoever gets a certain status also gets a preferred, um, yeah, let's say preferred business from us. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, we have one over here. No. I've heard that described. I've heard that described as prescriptive, not prescriptive, but prescriptive. What do we do now? Or does the system recommend that we do the response? Okay. Okay. I just want to re kind of repeat the question, be only because. Um, if we're filming it, so we want to hear what the question is. And so you asked about the algorithm-based. Um, what he meant by al algorithm-based decision making. Is that what the question was? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. First of all, um, we have a very clear um, message to all the people. So decisions are still made by the people. So we are not using a machine to make decisions. And this is not, at least not going to happen as long as I'm uh, responsible for that organization. Uh, we are using data to make educated decisions and we are using these algorithms to um, better understand the uh, huge amount of data we have in the background. So the, for instance, um, whenever we started with our risk management approach, we uploaded thousands and thousands of keywords that, that we wanted to have tracked online, wherever. Now, now we figure out, hey, we are getting way too many alerts. So we can basically use these alerts and the algorithm behind that alerts to say, okay, we don't want to have this tracked or maybe this supplier is not a supplier anymore, so we remove his name from the list. Um, to make just the uh, information flow a little bit more easy for the people. Otherwise, uh, we, will, we will get killed by the amount of messages. Um, these days, um, we are getting at least five to 10 alerts a day, which is not bad for a supply base with 6,000 people, plus all the political, geographical, and whatever happens around us. Um, but this is an area where we still need to work on, where we still have to train the systems to deliver better results. Okay, anybody else? Oh, okay, we have another question right here. Right in front, yeah. 
This is Freon. Uh, with respect to uh, design data and the other types of proprietary information, how do you protect intellectual property? Yeah, that's a good question. We had the same discussion with our IT department because we had very conservative people in our organization and suddenly these guys from purchasing came up with cloud-based technologies and servers uh, outside the US, outside our uh, properties. Um, so we have we have a very practical approach here. First of all, uh, we have certain requirements for all the partners we are working with in terms of uh, their IT centers, their IT partners and whatever. For instance, uh, the, the service center we are, or the, the hosting center we are using in, 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 in Europe, uh, it's also used by the NATO. Um, so there are certain requirements. Secondly, we have very strong contracts with these partners uh, where we also have uh, clear regulations about what happens if maybe the, the, this company is going down, if our relationship ends or whatever. So this is basically the way we are uh, working with the data. Is this answering your question? Okay, do you have any other questions? Well, I, I'd just like to ask one, and that was maybe you could just comment a little bit, um, Renault, we had, uh, on what some of the challenges were, or the biggest challenge on your project. Uh, the biggest challenge for sure uh, was the first attempt of Valley that uh, they didn't succeed with the project. So just based on this was a huge you know, challenge for us uh, as a supplier. Uh, we had some another, another challenges to put together a very big team, was up to 60 people. Uh, with different culture and different uh, background, uh, functional backgrounds, uh, technical backgrounds. And we had uh, some challenge as well because there are, there were involved, uh, there are involved a lot of technologies. We, what's, with, with uh, such kind of uh, huge project, uh, some products, uh, we, we even uh, found some, some bugs or problems with these products to put them together because they, these products were, uh, they were very pushed during the projects, during the project. So more or less was this kind of challenges that we, that we saw. Uh, did you want to comment a little bit about working with different suppliers, how you partnered with them or any other comments that you had or lessons learned or things? No? No, I think you were, I already yeah. spoke too much, right? So. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, well, if you want to ask some more questions, the, the, they'll stay for a couple of minutes. You know, I'm sure people, if you want to just come up and ask your question, that would be great. And I thank you very much. And I'd just like to thank, I thought they were world-class speakers. We really liked, I thought they had great presentations. They were very interesting and different perspectives, too. So thank you very, very much for staying. <laughs>